So teach us to number our days. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. This is Moses, the prayer of Moses. And he's looking back over all of the troubles of Israel. He's not a people who were greatly blessed of God, who'd seen such miracles, left Egypt with such high hopes, a land awaiting for them that was promised, a land flowing with milk and honey. And he's thinking now of, of all the wrath of God that had fallen upon those people. He's thinking of the people that are being turned away because of their rebellion and stubbornness. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They're all like sheep. In the morning they're like grass which grows up and in the morning it flourishes and it groweth up but in the evening it's cut down and it withers. What's the purpose of their living? What were they here for? What kind of waste is this? And that's when he says, Oh Lord, teach us to number our days. For all flesh is as grass. And the glory of man is as the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower thereof falleth away. The Bible says, Your life, our life is like a vapor that appears and suddenly gone. Are you ready to meet God? Do you know Jesus? The majority of them say, well, I don't want to talk about it. I'm all right in my own way. I've got my own religion. They don't even want to hear. They don't want to talk about it. And there's no eternal value. There's no eternal hope. They're living for this day. They have wasted. Many of them absolutely wasted their time, wasted their days. You know what the Lord is saying to his bride? Get ready, because I'm tearing down all the walls. It's high time to awake. Trim your lamps, get a good supply of oil, and make every day count now. Make every day count because time is short. I don't want to waste any time. And how can I do that? We've been commanded to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Our purpose is not to hold people. Our purpose is, is to conform you to the image of Jesus and ask you to go into all the world and preach the gospel. But just going to some exotic country or some troubled spot will not give you quality of time in itself. The Bible says many, many will come in the last days saying, Lord, we've done mighty works, cast out devils, healed the sick. But the Lord said, you wasted your life, you wasted your time, I didn't even know you. They were so busy working for Jesus, they didn't take the time to know him. It's not in going someplace or doing something great or special that gives the meaning to your time. Brother, sister, you could read this Bible all day long. If your heart wasn't in it, you're not making your days count. You could pray and tell you have no more strength left. You could pray for hours and hours and hours and have no meaning to it whatsoever. In fact, it could be an abomination to the Lord because your heart is not in it. The secret of making every day count is to develop a yearning heart for Jesus. A heart that pants after the Lord. David said, as the heart or the deer panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. David had a craving for the Lord. Every waking hour, he was longing, yearning, looking, reaching out to the Lord. That's how David made his days count. You are the reality. You're all that I want. You're all that I desire. And every waking hour, hundreds of times a day, your heart magnetically is pulled toward him. And you begin to reach out and long and say, Jesus, you are the one I want. Thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee. Is in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. David said, I pine for you, O Lord. I'm longing for you because nothing satisfies me down here anymore. Now I'll tell you what, the more you start yearning for Jesus, the less this world will attract itself to you. This man leads armies out into battle. This man writes poetry. This man plays instruments. This man is a man of many talents, many interests, very busy man. My heart is with you. He goes about doing the best he can. He's faithful, he's just, he's kind. He does a good day's job, but he's constantly yearning, reaching out to the Lord. That's why God said he's a man after my own heart. That's when he chases me. He's after me night and day. 
Abraham was a rich man. He'd be a rich man today by our standards. Abraham confessed he was a stranger and a pilgrim on earth looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. And I'm afraid a lot of us are going to miss out because we're not strangers. We are not pilgrims. We have dug down our roots. We're down here now thinking about how we're going to make it better. Folks, why are you digging down when it's all going to burn? Why are we digging? Why are we taking roots? Why can't we live as Abraham with our bags packed? He said, I am passing through. I'm a stranger down here. I'm an alien. I thank God that my citizenship is in holy Zion. That's going to be my eternal home. That's the city whose building maker is God. Hallelujah. That's a people lost in the blood who have nothing left but a yearning heart for Jesus. Paul said he had a desire to depart and be with Christ. He said, for I'm now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. And he's trying to say, come back to the yearning heart. Come back to the longing. And then you hear this. Teach us to number our days that we may delight ourselves in the Lord. And there's a, a warning I want to give before I close. When this disquietness comes upon us, and it is God trying to bring us back. And I tell you, God will do everything within His power to bring you back to that searching, seeking, hungry, thirsty heart. I am the satisfaction of your life. Give me your yearning heart. I'll give you all that you need to live for me in this last day.